This is Ringside Radio, your ringside ticket to some of the finest wrestling talk around. And now, here are your hosts, Grim Chorizo, Katrina Cena, and the Sloppy Joe! Hello everybody, this is Ringside Radio, episode 11, and I'm Grim Chorizo here with Sloppy Joe and Katrina Cena. And it has been a crazy week. Seth Rollins. Let's talk about Seth Rollins. Who? Let's talk about the shield. Because Why? it's over. Who? And I just bought my shield shirt. <laughs> my second shield shirt on Saturday. They debut in November 2012. In the same building that they end. Is yep. Banker's Life Field, field House in Indianapolis. Huh. I was actually there uh, at Survivor Series 2012. So it's just really ironic that they end, you know, the same in the same building that they started so about a year and a half later. You saw them debut. Yeah. And you saw, and then you saw their, last, their match. last match. Yeah, yeah. basically. It's pretty crazy to think about that. I have a very special friendship with the Shield. Yeah. <laughs> but what about now? I that, guess. Now that Seth Rollins takes a chair, literally, st- well, hits Roman Reigns in the back. Ambrose in the chest and beats him down like until a dog. there's like no chair left, basically. Yep, and then he did a blackout on yes. the chair. Yeah, maybe. Okay, okay. So we know what happened, and all our listeners out there surely yeah. saw it. Or if they weren't watching Raw, they heard about it, and you know and went if you back didn't to know, watch you it. You know, no, holy crap! Right. <laughs> so, uh, like, what were you guys' reactions? I guess. Like, what did you? Like, did you think it was going to happen when it happened? Like, what what was going on in your head? I had been th- expecting or thinking that at payback that something was going to happen like that. And I thought it was going to be Roman Reigns, for sure, because it seemed like he's, ki- he's kind of like the golden boy that is being groomed for stardom. So Definitely. what better way to put, the, put him with Triple H and Randy Orton? We knew Batista was leaving. They're going to need new powerhouse. Right. Roman Reigns could fill the spot. So it didn't happen at payback. And then the next night, it happens, but it's not Reigns. So my mind is thinking, because I, I had known something big happened, was going to happen at the end of Raw, and I was watching late. And it came main event time, and it just seemed like, okay, this is when it's going to happen. Reigns is going to join, or turn on the shield, and it wasn't Reigns. It was the person that nobody expected. <laughs> the... Seth Rollins, the, the super face, the cool guy, the guy that everybody the guy likes. who's diving off everything, making everyone freak out and love him, and he turns, mm. he turns. I so my reaction was completely shocked, and it was unpredictable, which is what needed to happen. Well, for me, I knew it was going to happen before I watched it because I had seen spoilers on the internet or whatever. But just seeing it happen though, still completely shocked me, just because it's like what Grim said. We, at one point, we were thinking, oh, it's going to be Dean. And at the next point, oh, it's Roman. Well, it was neither. <laughs> it was Rollins. And it threw everybody for a loop. And and the re- reaction that he got from the crowd when he did it was a lot more intense than I thought it was going to be. Because mm-hmm. it's like what Grimm said. Everybody loved Rollins. I wish, I wish, not to interrupt you, but I so wish they had done some crowd shots during that. Mm-hmm. Why would you not? Seriously. Because I'm sitting in my living room watching it. and. My phone is on the floor at this point because it was in my lap and I just jump up and my hands are over my mouth and I'm just like, I can't, I can't believe that just happened. Yeah, I think my pose was something along the lines of, yeah. this, I know you can't see this, but basically, you know, the hands over your head, like, what is, like, just what? shock, like, what? Yeah, and, I mean, and for me, when I saw it happen, like I said, I already saw it was going to happen because I saw spoilers or whatever, but, um, but when he, like... Grab the chair and the other two step forward. I just get this cheesiest grin on my face, like, "Well, here it comes!" And then it happened. I'm just like, "Oh." Well, I was I I was so dense, I guess, or just completely like, completely not even thinking that it would ever happen. Because even when he goes out and grabs the chair and puts it in the ring and stands up and he's holding the chair, um, it just never it never occurred to me. And then after Triple H said, "There's always a Plan B," and there's this long dramatically awkward like it was so long it was awkward Mm -hmm. pause and i'm like did somebody forget their line did somebody forget their cue you know somebody missed their cue and then he just 
just leveled Dean. And I just, I couldn't, I, yeah. It was just shocking. So it, it didn't occur to me at all that it might be him until he had actually flattened one of them with the chair. Mm-hmm. Heel turns happen, you know. Mm-hmm. They happen often enough. But this was one that really affected people. Like, this was a this was a big one. Huge. And it's funny actually just going through, like, you know, Reddit, Facebook, anything, just reading people's opinions on this. This is one thing that everyone is... I mean, they're excited to see where it's going, but they're devastated. They're, they they th- feel... Because they everyone loves feel the strongly shield, about you know? It, yeah. And they're... Like, there were people, comments were saying, like, Seth broke my heart. Like, he literally... Yeah. And they're like... <laughs> I mean, and they literally were saying, like, I hate you, Seth Rollins. Actually, that's funny because... I hate you, too. I had, um... I was typing my status, of course, um, because I'm just like, um, I don't know what to do. I'm going to turn to social media. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that was that was the word I had actually typed in was heartbroken. And I took it away and put devastated because I'm like, I don't know. I just thought I'd get made fun of by uh, stupid people who uh, don't understand. Or just the fact that there are much bigger problems mm, in the world. Yeah. So I went from heartbroken to devastated. But that's funny because that is the terminology I had mm, originally used yeah. before I decided to go back and edit my post. And the thing is, I think people would be hugely affected no matter which one of the three did it. But mm-hmm. the, it was, uh, take the, I guess you could say, you know, devastation, maybe anger, sadness, along with the shock value of it being mm-hmm. Rollins. It's well, just... and actually, we, and of course, we have, a, we have a group on Facebook where we as wrestling fans, as a small community of wrestling fans within our circle of friends can communicate, post pictures, share thoughts and opinions. And uh, Grim had posted a picture. And one of our friends, Chris, who was actually on the last podcast, had uh, we were commenting back and forth, he and I were. And he pointed out that it, now that you think about it, it actually makes sense. Because Seth Rollins, they've always called the architect of the shield. And remember when they were having their little... Uh, their little like quarrels, quarrels fights, yeah. and it was like we were like oh it's gonna happen like back in the yeah. spring and then it actually yeah. didn't but i remember tyler seth walking out yeah and roman chasing after him going you're the glue yeah. you're the glue <laughs> yeah. and uh so there's you know he's the glue mm-hmm. he's the architect he's yeah. you know the cool guy that everybody just really likes mm-hmm. Why not? You know, Triple yeah. H is the cerebral assassin. Makes sense to take him out. And I'm totally stealing this from Chris because I haven't even had time to sleep, much less <laughs> think about what has happened because I've been, you know, really busy with work. But uh, so that made so much sense when Chris pointed that out. Um, it does. Now that you think about it, it really does make sense because, you know, he's the cerebral assassin. Why not take the architect of the shield, yeah. the glue of the shield. And just watch it fall. And watch it crumble. Mm, yeah. Yep. It definitely crumbled. Yeah. <laughs> Instantly. Yeah. So Garnish. there's so much we can talk about it happening, but what I want to know is your guys' opinions on where where does it go from here? What do you guys think is next for all for each of the three down the line? Not like, you know, five years mm-hmm. from now. I mean like, kind of the immediate. What do you think comes out of this? Well for me, I feel like there should be another it almost seems like there should be another Shield vs. Evolution match, but it wouldn't make sense now that it would be three on two. So I think what they could do is maybe at Money in the Bank do a Rollins and Orton versus Reigns and Ambrose, and that way they can just settle the feud and it's done and over. But I don't know, because it just doesn't make sense to me that they were just like, well, okay, he hit a tight to the chair, we're just going to ignore it now. Like it, well, they, yeah. they need to do, have some yeah, sort of match with it. Out of it. Yeah. And another thing to think about is, why do you think, why did he do it? Like, what's, do you think Triple H... From a storyline perspective? Yeah, from a storyline perspective. Do you think Triple H maybe promised him something? Because, I mean, it... Yeah. um, Title shot? That's what I was kind of thinking about. Maybe they're going to, like, set him up to... Win money in the bank. Money in the bank, yeah. Um, you know, because and I'm with I'm with Shoply, Shloppy. I think they're gonna do the tag team match of Money mm-hmm. in the Bank, but I think that's gonna be, if not the end, definitely the beginning of the end of Reigns and Ambrose yeah, together. Yeah. Which is sad, but it's exciting too. It, yeah, um, you can't just do the two of them for very long. But what I could see, yeah, I agree, and they won't be the Shield. No, it doesn't. You know, you could put in a third guy. You could add six yeah. guys. It's not gonna be the no, Shield. No, no, no. It's just not. Um. But, yeah, 
my my guess is yeah there probably was some kind of deal you know i'm gonna make you a star you're gonna get a title shot you're gonna win money in the bank any or all yeah. of those things was probably promised to him but the funny thing is it's so it's so ironic because earlier in the night batista when he was backstage doing his promo mm-hmm. was complaining that since he had come back nothing that he had been promised yeah. was given to yeah. him so it's like okay are they trying to bring this full circle like is he going to make, is Triple H going to make good on his, you know, maybe mm-hmm. promises that he's possibly made to Seth Rollins? Has he made any promises to Seth Rollins? Is Seth uh-huh. Rollins tired of, you know, being a, you know, in a faction? And, yeah. But that doesn't make sense either because now he's in another one. Yeah. Okay. So it's got to be Triple H either, you know, manipulating, mentally manipulating yeah. or, you know, bribery or something there's got to be something to it yeah. because there's no reason that such a cool guy who's got everything going for him already would, just, would do that yeah, so yeah i think there's got to yeah. be more to it that will probably come to the I, I had like when i saw it happen i had three thoughts that came to mind i figured it was either one triple H like well i'll give you x amount of money yeah or he's like well like katrina said i'll give you a title shot i'll do this for you, do that for you, or he just flat out said, well, if you don't do it, I'm going to fire you. That That's actually an, <laughs> an interesting thought. I think this is really, you know, think really thinking into it, and I don't think this is how it's going to be, but I mean, that's the point of this podcast, to talk about wrestling. There are different things that it could have been. I think probably what it is is, yeah, he promised them he'll take him to the top. Mm. Maybe, yeah, put him in Money in the Bank, or give him a title shot down the line, but <clears throat> that is an interesting thought, that maybe it's not what he wants to do, he's doing it for mm-hmm. the good so, of the others. I really don't like think a that's manipulation. True, thing. But it's like if you don't do this, you're all fired or you're yeah. all something. I I don't think they're gonna go with that. I think they're gonna play out the full that deal, would, deal thing. That but would that's just completely isn't it? weaken his yeah. it is an interesting thought, but mm-hmm. it would completely weaken his credibility as a heel. Yeah. Unless they're just planning on not far down the line by SummerSlam turning him face again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I honestly don't know what's going to happen. It's just interesting when you said fired to think about that. Mm-hmm. And actually, before it happened, the actual turn, uh, Chris and I and people we were watching with, Chris said, hey, maybe if the Shield's ending tonight, maybe uh, the contract for payback or something, they didn't read the... Like, Triple H goes out there and he's like, uh, you guys should read through your contract or something. And maybe in the contract it said something like, this is your last match together, you have to break up afterwards or something. I was like, mm-hmm. well, that would be an interesting way mm-hmm. to break up the shield without having to turn anyone. But obviously, they didn't go for that, which right. yeah. is better. Because well, yeah. That, that would have been kind of lame. It's like, <laughs> you can't team up anymore. It's like, why not? Yeah. But, you know, the thing that the thing that's so exciting to me is this this tells me, almost guarantees that he will be the champion yeah. mm-hmm. sooner yeah. or later he People, will be they're putting this much faith in him as a performer yeah he's he will be the champion some people are proposing that if he doesn't win money in the bank they could see him take it on brian for the title at SummerSlam. that would be an amazing match that would too, be so fantastic and honestly i see not too long from now i see dean and roman splitting up whether it's dean turning on roman or them just realizing they can't do it just the two of them mm-hmm. i don't see a new guy coming in I don't see anything like that. I see the well, and that's where they can play, and it. they don't have their architect mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah, they're like they're like we can't do it. Yeah, and we've talked before that if any of them is gone, they complement each other yeah. so mm-hmm. well. Like, it, they're they they really are like a family. Yeah. It's really mm-hmm. weird. Should you listen to Ringside Radio? Let's ask WWE superstar Daniel Bryan. Yes, yes, yes. yes! Well, this past weekend was a. Just crazy, insanely fun. Probably the best weekend as a wrestling fan I've ever had in my life. I I, I would call this WrestleFest 2014. (laughs) (laughs) So, Katrina, why don't you start us off? Because you you went to a show on Saturday, so... I did. How was that? Uh, It was fantastic. Okay, so Saturday I went to a house show in Springfield. And I... My best friend went along, who's not a wrestling fan, kind of tolerates it for my sake, listens to me talk about it, and knows who people are, but is like, eh, not my thing. Well, he decided to go along, and um, he said he had a really great time. He said it's like nothing he's ever seen before. So, if we have any non-wrestling fans out there, I hope I hope <laughs> you heard that. Because he really said, you know, concerts or anything like that. He said it's just, it's not quite like, you know, what he experience with he and he said John Cena coming out he said I know people don't like him or whatever but he said him coming out and the way people just reacted and 
flew out of their seats and kids just, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it's almost like what people, what some people actually live for, you know, yeah. is that moment yeah. when there's something that really just takes you away like that. So we did have a really great time. Of course, I always have a great time. Hmm. But to hear my best friend who, you know, isn't a wrestling fan say that it was like nothing he's ever experienced before was really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had, um, had some fun experiences in the parking lot. I got there early and it was ridiculously hot. But um, got to meet some people, which was cool. And uh, the first ones come over were Paige and Summer Rae. Which were really, they were both really nice. And, you know, Summer Rae just seems questionable on Total Divas. <laughs> but she was really cool. She <laughs> smiled a lot. She signed, took pictures for anybody who wanted them. And Paige was quite the same way. So, um, and Grim kind of had a had an exciting experience <laughs> that involved Paige. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, just sitting at home, you know, didn't go to that show. My phone rings. <laughs> it's Katrina. Oh, okay. So I pick it up and... She's like, hey, I got something for you. And it's like, oh, what's that? And she was saying she had just met Paige and got me an autograph. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's so awesome. Thanks. And then she's like, I was kind of in disbelief that she was actually that close to Paige, who I <laughs> He's like, wait, no, much. no. I so, go, dude, she's like 10 feet away from me right now. I swear. And then I hear her yell for Paige to come over. I was like, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> so she comes over and she put, puts Paige on the phone and... I have a phone conversation with the Divas champion. <laughs> so that happened. <laughs> that did happen. I was there and I watched the whole thing. That will go down as one of the most amazing moments of my life. <laughs> so, yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, got, I got to hand it to Paige. I didn't, other than seeing her on TV, I didn't know anything about her. You know, I've never, obviously never met her or anything. For such a young lady... She is so put together, classy, polite, well-spoken, just... Beautiful. Okay, I guess. <laughs> but I... No, really, after, you know, interacting with her yeah. um, face-to-face, I was very, very impressed with such a young lady. She's really got herself together. To see her smiling the whole time while talking to you on the phone was really cool. She meant it. You know, it wasn't like, OMG, I have to talk to this dude. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, this guy really likes me and this is going to be so fun. Yeah. And uh, so it was cool. Got to see a few others too. Dolph Ziggler, Big E. Um, Dolph is always great, so that was nothing new. Kofi, always great, so that was nothing new. Um, because they're both always willing to come over and sign and do pictures. And, um, and then Big E, I got to meet him for the first time, which was really funny. And I actually did tell him I really enjoy his... <laughs> Instagram silliness, and uh, he did seem genuinely appreciative of that. So that was my parking lot experience. It was a lot of fun. And got to see other people come in, too, like Bray Wyatt, the way he was interacting and just, like, waving and smiling and stuff was pretty cool because I've never actually seen him like that. So that was interesting. So the next next day, me and Sloppy along with Katrina and our friends uh, Frankie and Buns... <laughs> Sorry, Buns. Uh, <laughs> we went to Payback in Chicago. For we did. Four of us was our first ever pay-per-view event. And I think most of our first times being to the Allstate Arena. Mm -hmm. and Experiencing the Chicago oh, crowd. Yes, the Chicago. That's honestly what I was most excited about for you guys. Yeah, because be I Chicago. have been a handful of times. And there's really... There's really not anything to really compare it to because there's house show crowds and then there's, you know, pay-per-view and TV crowds. In Chicago, the Allstate Arena is a TV yeah. slash pay-per-view crowd. Yeah, they're not, there's they're such a world Everyone difference. always, everyone, mm -hmm. and you can tell when they're in Chicago that they're always hot and mm -hmm. we got to be, we part got to be in that it, crowd. Yeah. Yep. So that in itself was such an experience. But all along, it, all, it was just a great experience mm. great it, Every, yes, everything yes, it about was. it i mean from just the traffic the drive there i mean frankie frankie drove us and we were there in like two hours mm -hmm. like mid great time yeah it was just so that was that was a nice plus and then <clears throat> getting there didn't if there was uh rain and stuff it was all while we were inside we didn't have mm -hmm. to worry about that that was nice and uh we got to meet some wrestlers ourselves so or some 
WWE people, maybe not all wrestlers, but, I mean, basically we were deciding, should we go eat or should we go join this group of people waiting, and I'm really glad we went over there and we wouldn't uh, have yeah. got anyone. So. Yeah, because we were really up in the air about it, because mm-hmm. my experience has been at the Allstate, for the most part, not getting to meet people. Yeah. So, and that's kind of what, you know, I told the group was that, you know, if we go eat, we run the risk of, you know, missing out meeting somebody. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if we go try to meet somebody, we might just completely waste our time. So I'm certainly glad that we decided to go mm-hmm. take a risk and see oh, what yeah. happened. Because we were over there, and I think I think the first one to come over was Kofi. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. Kofi comes over, and from what Katrina said and just from her pictures and experiences, he's always one who does that yeah. and loves the fans. So that was awesome that we got the chance to, you know, meet him and get pictures with him. and. He's uh, just a really good yeah, guy. Yeah, he, he is awesome. Uh, Justin Roberts, ring announcer, came yeah. over shortly after him. He is really cool, he's too. Cool. And that was your first time mm-hmm. meeting Justin. Yep, right? so I've never seen him before. Yeah. That was cool. And then after a little bit, some blonde chick comes out, weighs <laughs> over, and I, I couldn't tell who it was at mm. first, but then someone said it was Renee, and we're like, oh, God, it's Renee! <laughs> and then she came over. Well, I don't think I did that, but the rest of them <laughs> certainly did. Katrina especially <laughs> was, oh, God! So she comes <laughs> over and starts... Sign taking pictures with people gets to us, and we got some pics with Renee. And that I, was, I put them well, over the a little part. bit too. Yeah, Katri- I'm, I'm Katrina. I kind of just like said hi and started, so it wasn't totally yeah. awkward. And I was just like, we hi. Totally so I'm pretty, yeah, because they were just staring and drooling, and it was it was about to get weird. <laughs> you guys want anything, or are you just <laughs> <laughs> are you just enjoying the view? <laughs> um, no, but I just kind of said hi. I said I'm pretty sure you're these guys' favorite. <laughs> And she was like, "Oh, thanks," and she was just really nice. Yeah, she was cool. She was cool. Yeah. So. And poor Buns did not get a picture. Oh no, he. After you know waiting for a while, finally got in there. And I gotta say, the Allstate's a very, I think it's a pretty awesome. Set arena, up? Venue, yeah. I mean, yeah, other only, than only, other than the out, like, the lobby yeah, being like yeah. invisible is very annoying. Outside, yeah. like the actual arena, like being inside the place is awesome, but the outside kind of like walking around is very it's kind of close quarters yeah or something. and I don't that know. merch line was awful yeah, <laughs> yeah the mer- so like right after we walked in the doors oh there was, we see this like entourage of security and we're like what's going on and people are like yelling this name and i keep hearing seth <laughs> seth and i'm like trying not to fall on the ground because I'm looking around for Seth Rollins <laughs> yeah. and I turn and we see Stephanie McMahon walking by yeah, just, with this entourage of security. She's just smiling away yeah. and Same kind of <laughs> sloppy like, goes, yeah. sloppy goes, hi Steph. Yeah. She's just like, Hey guys. It's like, well, the, what that Stephanie McMahon, what? Yeah. And Why? I, I what? literally, I remember just standing and staring for like 15 seconds. Like that was Stephanie McMahon. And she just walked right next. Cause I've up. never, I've never yeah. been that close and to her. That was crazy. My, my first thought was when I saw the security, also I saw was a bunch of security in a circle and then the person in the middle, I'm like, wow, someone's already getting kicked out of her. Oh, yeah. She hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Gosh, well, and then they walked by and Stephanie's show. right there. I'm like, oh, oh hi. Yeah. <laughs> we were all a little confused yeah. and flustered about mm-hmm. that. It was pretty sweet though. Oh yeah, yeah. Like she was so close, I could have like reached out and touched her, but that probably would have been. You a probably would have gotten killed. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Then you would have yeah. been getting escorted out. <laughs> we would have been like, "Bye, who wants this seat? Have fun." <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, obviously the show, we don't need it. The no. card was. I mean, yeah, the, the card was. The show top was notch. great. I, that was a great show to be and in. Guys, I believed. Yeah. I believed. Okay, podcast listeners. I have to tell you, I believed the whole weekend. Schloppy was kind enough. One of the nicest and only nice things he's ever done for me. Only. <laughs> <laughs> he let me borrow his Bowleaf shirt because I don't have one yet. And if you've listened to our previous podcast, you know that we love Bo Dallas. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was very, 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 very hopeful that he would be at the house show. I wore my bow leaf shirt, and he was not at the house show. But I, <clears throat> my bow leaf shirt. Oh, I'm sorry. I wore Sloppy's bow leaf shirt. He thinks he's he thinks he's getting it back. Yeah, I'm really not getting um, it back. But um, I kept bow leaving, and then we didn't see him in the parking lot, so we were like, okay, whatever. And then a couple shows into the pay per view, or a couple matches into the pay per view, I get a text message from my mom saying. 
Bo versus Kofi was added for tonight because she's watching on the network. So the commentary, the network panel, all that stuff, we're not getting, we're not hearing, you know, and we couldn't even see the network panel from where we were sitting. So I see this text and I'm just like <laughs> flipping out in my seat. And there were like people within like a 20 row radius on either side of us that just thought I was insane. But what are you doing? And Sloppy is getting a text. <laughs> <laughs> He's failing miserably. Um, so... I believed, and all these guys believed too, and we all together got to see Bo because in person for the first time because yeah. we did not stop believing. That was because that was awesome. Even though and we started an amazing chant by ourselves. Yeah. That according to Grimm, I haven't rewatched the pay per view. You can actually hear it. Yeah, I, I, you can hear it. I it went like this: We, we believe. We believe. We believe. So yeah, listen out for that one. Also, we were go- we were like bowing. I guess we were like bow, 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 bow. That was awesome. Bo. And the people behind us were awesome. Yes, they were. All, they were we were we were awesome. like section two hundred four was like the we bow were, cheering mm-hmm. section. We were, and you could tell. I just thought it was cool. You could tell the people behind us are NXT watchers mm-hmm. talking about Tyler Breeze mm-hmm. and Sami Zayn and stuff. So that's cool. That's really cool. So yeah, getting to see bow was awesome. They added that and they added. Uh, the Rhodes or the Brotherhood and Ryback, right so which I just thought was cool because I'd never seen Gold Dust or anything, and mm-hmm. it was a good match. Every match was was great. It was great to see live, and we got to see the awesome spots through the Last Man Standing match and uh, the uh, Shield and Evolutions match. So it was great. Okay, so one of my favorite things at Payback, it was just a very intense moment during the Last Man Standing match, and we kind of talked about this afterwards. We went out to eat at IHOP, and we're kind of going around the table talking about like. A favorite moment. Mm. And one of my favorite moments was when Cena picked up those steel mm. steps and just flung them. He chucked them yeah. out of the ring, over the top rope, and directly into Bray Wyatt's face. Mm. And it was it was amazing because it was so not Cena. That was mm. awesome. It was fantastic. Yeah. I loved that. I and turned, it I turned when that too. happened. Yeah. I was favoring Bray the, uh, until that happened, and yeah. then I was like, bloop. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I noticed other people did too, but that was that's really cool to see that happen with my friends because I mm. get not everybody likes Cena. I yeah. get, you know, even my friends that go with me aren't going to cheer Cena. I have mm. no control over anybody yeah. but myself. But to hear people turn in favor of him mm. over, you know, some of the things that like, were happening, it was, was like, man, this is exactly what, this is exactly why we love wrestling. Yeah. It tells a story and it, you know, it grabs you emotionally. Next pay-per-view, Money in the Bank. But who do you guys think could walk out with the briefcase, we'll say? Who do you see walking out with the briefcase? Well, I see Cesaro walking mm-hmm. out with it. So, I mean, even even if they have the title on the line, I still see him winning it. Hmm. Interesting. Just, I don't know, just because, like, the way they've been building him and just rumors of future cards that I've heard, it really seems like he may be the yeah. one walking out with it. And makes the most sense. Yeah. What do you think? Bo. No, I'm just Bo. kidding. <laughs> that would be amazing. Money in the Bo? Okay, that was bad. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> Boney in the bank. Okay. That's even worse. <laughs> um. Okay, well, I think it would be amazing if it was Bo. But. <laughs> I did it! I'm going. <laughs> I have the money in the bank briefcase. <laughs> I believed. Okay, but um, I'm going to join everyone in reality and say that Bo's probably not going to win, yeah. nor will he maybe even be in probably the match. Be, yeah. But um, probably I, can, I can see a few different things happening. Cesaro is one that we've all yeah. talked about yeah, yeah. winning, and that's probably my number one choice. Um, I'm wondering if Rollins is going to win it mm-hmm. because yeah. of, you know, what's going on now, and that's all part of, you know, Triple H's deal yeah. or, you know, part of making him the guy. Yeah. Um, or I could see Reigns being so fueled hmm. by what happened yeah. that, you know, and everybody still just really loves him. Yeah. And um, I think Ambrose will be in it too if they don't do that tag team mm-hmm. thing, um, which I don't know. 
but I I could see possibly Reigns taking it too, just fueled by, you know, everything that has yeah. happened. And that, you know, gets him to that point and yeah, he just point. wins it. So I don't know. There those are my I guess three scenarios, yeah. but I'm the top one I'm thinking Cesaro. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I, I think Cesaro definitely seems the most likely just to throw another name out there. I mean, what's next for Bray? He could win money mm-hmm. in the bank too. So I could see I could see Bray also, hmm, even though he might have the Intercontinental title still, I think Bad News Barrett mm-hmm. would be another good good bet. So any, it's got to be one of these names we're throwing yeah. around. They just seem so likely. Like a S.H.I.E.L.D. member, Cesaro, Bray, or Barrett. They just seem very... <laughs> and the thing is, I can see all those people being in that match, too. That would be so it's going to get to the point yeah. where we're just like, well... We, we don't, don't really care. Awesome so basically, <laughs> we just made that. And Del Rio. <laughs> and Del Rio. <laughs> and Del Rio. Qualified. Which yeah. should have been Dahl. Yes, it should yeah. have. Somebody threw this around one time, and I think it is the most bizarre, weird, and like, it would be very enter- like entertaining and like, wait, what kind of thing is, if they do one, and hanging up is the title and the briefcase. They're oh, both hanging up. That would be insane. Same match. So huh. my logic is, do you want the title now, or do you want the title it's later? Like, why not just get... I mean, if you're up there, just get them both. Yeah. But if you can get one, get the briefcase, because if you get the title, the guy who gets the br- briefcase mm-hmm. will just cash in. That's exactly right. Uh-huh. That's crazy. So somebody threw that around, and I was like, that's ver- That's so interesting. I would like to see it. Yeah. I just... It'd be so weird. It's weird, yeah. Because imagine, like, somebody gets the title, and then right after someone gets the briefcase, and they just say they cash in right then. Like, it's just yeah. so weird, you know? Yeah. My God, this is the best damn podcast I've ever heard in my life, King. So I heard a rumor that Triple H, I think I told you guys about this, he called like a meeting saying that he wanted to, there was just a few things he wanted to do with WWE shows. And part of that was about wanting to put more focus on actual storylines. Apparently in this meeting, he said he really wants there to be actual development of these lower card wrestlers and mid card because. That's exactly what needs to happen because without well, that, those are your future main yeah, eventers. You have no reason to really care about mm-hmm. them if there isn't, if you don't know anything about them. Mm-hmm. You know, well, and that's one thing like NXT does pretty well. I think is gives everyone kind of a personality and yeah. stuff where some of the guys on the roster maybe they came from there, but they don't really have one anymore mm-hmm. because they don't get a chance. And the people who are from NXT now, people don't really know them because that was really before the network was. Yeah, I think. True. I mean, now people like Bo or. Bruce Ever, Adam Rose, but everyone knows them because of the network, but anyone else who came up before them, like Big E, they're like, oh, okay, it's just a new guy. Yeah. I guess what I was what I'm trying to get at is the fact that there's still this clash between Triple H and Vince's creative mm-hmm. minds, and Vince has the final say regardless, where if you look at NXT, which is a Triple H run thing, are you are you looking forward to, are you wanting a full-on Triple H WWE suit. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. I mean, no, nothing against Vince, because Vince is cl- clearly a mastermind. But yeah. Vince will also do anything for money. It, exactly, <laughs> and Triple H came from the bottom. He's worked his way up. Well, Triple H and, has been there. Yeah. Yeah. And in a, in a capacity that Vince has mm. not. Yeah. So that's one way, that's, that's one th- thing that I trust Triple H's judgment more in that case, because mm-hmm. he knows what it's like to be that bottom card and to have mm-hmm. to, you know, make his way up. And I think he wants them to be taken care of, and I think yeah. he wants credibility for the future of the company. And if you look at NXT, he's doing a great job, and I think it's starting to transition into the main mm-hmm. roster, whether it's a coincidence or it's his actual doing I think it is since Wrestlemania I mean we've said it there's been noticeable noticeable change Mm -hmm. a lot of it is from NXT filling up the rosters and just the fact that there really are more story elements into Mm -hmm. things even if it's just little things like like just give you a reason to fight over something you know like the Rusa Big E match there wasn't much reason other than the fact that Bruce says waving yeah. a Russian flag USA, around. USA, Russia, yeah. yeah. So but that, it's at I mean, least something. Yeah. It's not like, we fought once and you beat me. Mm-hmm. Let's just fight again. 
or as Sloppy has said before, the fans like this guy and the fans like <laughs> this guy, so let's put them in yeah. a match. Or what they actually do, well, these guys have fought about seven times. Eh, might as well do it again. Yeah. What's one more match? Because that's seriously what they do. If, there's just some people who fight each other so much. Like, Sheamus and Del Rio seem like mm. they fight a lot all the time, and they've done it in the past. It used to be Ziggler and Kofi. Do you remember how oh many my times gosh, yes. you would turn on it? And recently, it was Santino and Emma and Fandango and uh, yeah. Layla or Summer Rae before that. It was just like, give us anything else. <gasps> I've got... We're going to talk about uh, Bo? Well... Kind of. <laughs> okay, so... How much since, time do we have? Because I could go on for a long time. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> not much as much as So... <laughs> Shouldn't have said that. We, over the past, I guess, month since we did our last one, we've had two debuts from people we've seen vignettes for and stuff. Like Adam Rose and Bo. So, and both have been here for a few weeks now, and I want to know, what do you guys think? First of all, who do you think had the better debut? Hmm... I would say Bo. Well, Bo actually the, wrestled. The debut. Because he, yeah, yeah, obviously he wrestled. But two, he just seemed to get a better reaction. Adam Rose now is getting well, great. Right. And there was kind of a story behind him debuting where to, as to Adam Rose, he's like, oh, okay, well, here's this guy. Let's who, have a party, yeah. Yeah, was, let's just have a party yeah. where, as for Bo, he can't come back on NXT because yeah. he had lost his match. That's true. So there, it, there's... A reason for him debuting. Yeah, which... Well, and this is like, it's all Bo has left. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, because he can't return to NXT. Mm -hmm. So. But, I, yeah, I think Bo, obviously, because he wrestled. And the, but Adam Rose now is actually wrestling, and mm -hmm. he's impressive. Yeah. He is very impressive. They're both very impressive. <laughs> but, I mean, as far as their very, their debut, I would say Bo had the stronger. Yeah. Regardless of if he didn't wrestle. I think even if he went out there and just cut that promo... He still got a bigger reaction mm -hmm. than Rose did in the very beginning. But yeah. one thing I will say about Bo is I still feel like some people aren't exactly sure what they should do mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. I think after, obviously after Payback when he was said the thing about the Blackhawks, I think it was clear like, oh, boo. Or <laughs> something. But yeah, for a while, I think some people were probably, like, I mean, obviously we know who Bo is and mm -hmm. we kind of know... A little bit more, but like people who are just casual turn in, turn on the TV. This guy comes out and he's being inspirational, helping his friend up, not for you know his opponent mm -hmm. up. People might just be like, "Oh, he's a good guy." Right. So I I think the point is, which I think is good because it's progressing him more. Mm -hmm. Where eventually he's going to keep doing these things, and eventually when he loses, <laughs> think about when he loses. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. He's going to throw a tantrum. Yeah. And Yes, and we can edit in the fun music, like the Christian tantrum <laughs> yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. If you haven't seen Christian throwing a tantrum on YouTube, you should definitely look that up. That is what was like the best 15 seconds. Yes, ever. it is. And when we watch it, we have to watch it like eight times. We, yeah, we kind you of watch, watch it on it a once. Loop. You have to watch it eight no. or nine times. No. But I don't know. My thing is, if you... This is kind of a bold statement, but to me... If you don't know what to do with Bo when he comes out, you're not paying enough attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Truly. Because he comes out, and like, I I love him, and we all know that. We know. But I didn't used to because I'm like, man, he's like fingernails on a freaking chalkboard. <laughs> he sucks. Um, our friend Frankie says he has a punchable face, and he does. Yeah. Like, when he smiles, you just want to clobber him. Mm -hmm. And his promos are awesome awful <laughs> and his voice is so annoying yep. but it's so but even 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 if i didn't know bo even if i hadn't seen nxt if you don't know what to do with him when he comes out you're not paying attention because him randomly getting up and screaming i did it <laughs> you know or i'm winning yeah or and you can see the sarcasm behind helping his friend up and saying oh mm. you know and the uh you can the ego like yeah, yeah exactly uh the narcissism so to me like you should know what to do yeah. with Bo if mm. you're paying attention especially but now but i'm going to do what i'm not supposed to do with Bo because <laughs> i love him exactly. you know i think he's fantastic yeah. I guess he's one a thing beast that I, I, very I, powerful i'm sure you guys heard it they actually started doing one of the things one of the chants they did on NXT they started saying boring 
Yeah. Boring. Totally boring. Yeah. boring. Which is perfect. They're finally getting that. And uh, when, eventually, I hope he acknowledges it. And, it's and like, that's something that, like... Ring. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. That's great. And that, that normally, I'm not a big... I don't like the boring change. I don't no, like, and I, that's... But that, I, that time, I'm like... I know what you're saying. I yeah, thought of good. you when they said that because we talked about how that's really just mm-hmm. not yeah. respectful at all. But when that happened, I laughed because it's like it's supposed to be yeah. like they're they're mm-hmm. supposed to be getting all over him. Yeah. You know, just being annoyed. So I was so, really pleased to hear yeah, that. It's doing what it's supposed to mm-hmm. do. We listen to the Ringside Radio on Friday nights, Maggle. Alright, it is random. Superstar time. Something we've been doing since episode one. Here we go. And the number is 86, Kurt Hawkins. Oh. <laughs> Not really doing much nowadays. Still on the roster, though. I would put him almost now there with, like, you know, JTG and Yoshitatsu, kind of just not doing anything at all. Well, he was on NXT. He was on, on NXT. NXT. Yeah. Oh, yeah. NXT yeah, he fought, he fought Neville. That was mm-hmm. almost weird. But, yeah. I mean, the guy's a former tag team champion, you know. he He's done stuff, and he's he's good. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, just... And it seemed like when they were trying to push him with Tyler Rex. Tyler Rex and, and him were, they were entertaining, and then they did the Yeah, whole, they really were. Did, they kind of did like a stripper thing. That was kind yeah. of Yeah. And and then, I remember that. And then, then Tyler Rex. That Tyler Rex. He, he was just like, I'm out of here. Yeah. I don't want to know what they're going to make me do next. <laughs> I like Kurt Hawkins. It's just now, at this point, since he's been gone, like off for so long, I just kind of... Sounds bad. I just kind of forget about him, mm-hmm. you know? But... There's not a whole lot to say for, for me about him other than I liked him, but there came a time when he just wasn't really relevant. Yeah. I think he really should have been in 3 and B instead of Jinder Mahal because he fit the look so much better yeah. than he did. And That's a good point. We always threw that around. We were like, yeah. why isn't it Kurt Hawkins? Yeah. yeah. Not much, there's not much to say about him because he really hasn't done a whole lot. He's talented. I don't have a problem with him. I just don't. You know, we don't see him anymore. Yeah. So. so, Kurt Hawkins, your best days are probably behind you. Yep. That was depressing. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock has got to know, what is your favorite podcast? Well, well, I guess my my favorite podcast would probably be... It doesn't be. matter what your favorite podcast is, because The Rock's favorite podcast is Ring Side Radio. So a friend, a friend of ours and a fan of Ringside Radio, Adam, asked us to kind of talk about the WWE Network, like what, what it has, why it is worth it, what, you know, what they could improve, what kind of stuff could go into it to just make it better, and kind of, I guess, selling people who don't have it on why it's worth it and what, what are our favorite parts of it. Yeah, I mean, it's basically like Netflix for wrestling. Yeah. It's like... Yeah, that's the only thing you can really compare it to is Netflix. I mean, you go on there, you, they've got every every pay-per-view that's ever been done. <laughs> I guess the way I see it is, if you're going to spend, what, 60 bucks on a pay-per-view anyways mm-hmm. for that month, why not spend 10 for the well, pay-per-view? It's, and, it's completely a no-brainer. And yeah. everything with it. really it, is. You, it's just... It's kind of dumb not to do Yeah, it. it's because... And I think they're trying to convert this more to, like, Things on the WWE Network, because you can only get some things on there. For example, mm-hmm. Main Event now, I think, is only on main, yeah, it only is. on the network. For me, one of the biggest things other than the pay-per-views is, when I heard that, that, that you can get NXT on there, because we had watched mm-hmm. it on Hulu just for so long, that just to know that there was a place you could watch it without all the ads in between mm-hmm. it. Well, and we'd just be sitting there chomping at the bit, waiting for them to put it up so we could yeah, watch it exactly. on but Hulu. Yeah, exactly. this now, it's got a time that it's on, you can watch it, and... The thing about NXT is, if nobody's ever watched it, it is the best thing ever. (laughs) Basically. Really, I mean, that's enough to want to get the network, Mm, I would say. Yeah, it's enough for me to get it. And it's just nice you can be like, sitting down, want to put on Armageddon from 2003? Mm. Boom. There you go. Because I've noticed a lot of times when I'm using the network, I'm on the computer or playing a game on the computer or something, I'm like, "Hmm, like, you know what, we kind of just put a random pay-per-view on the background. Yeah. And they, they got, I mean, Legends House, I think, is actually mm-hmm. pretty entertaining. Yeah, it's pretty funny. And Countdown. Anytime you can see show. old guys LARPing is, <laughs> <laughs> is always a good time. Yeah, yeah Countdown, I love mm-hmm. Countdown. I will literally want there to be one f- every week for the rest of my life. Yeah. Because it's just so 
just a good it's good show mm -hmm. and i i think they're coming out with more things like the monday night war show or something there's some other ones it's really I, more content than any person can possibly watch mm -hmm. yeah i mean really because and i'm a pretty busy person between work and whatever else uh so there's a lot that i can't even catch up with so that just tells you how much is actually on there. Yeah, and, and they're, they've got all the Raws and Smackdowns from, like, past three years, and they're adding them, which I can't wait till they get mm -hmm. more, you know, mid-2000s Raws and Smackdowns because I'm just waiting to mm -hmm. watch that. Well, and so I'm, I'm excited because there were Raws or Smackdowns that I was in attendance mm -hmm. at that are on old VHS tapes somewhere because my dad's crazy like that and records every episode of every wrestling show ever. I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. We're talking hundreds of VHS tapes mm -hmm. in storage. You know, once they get those up, I can go back and actually watch the, yeah. the Raws that I was at and the Smackdowns that I was at because, you know, a lot of them I haven't seen in years because, let's face it, VCRs are hard to come by nowadays. Yeah. And that's what they're recorded on. So yeah. I think that's really a great opportunity for people to go back and, you know, remember something that they were a part of or just remember something that was really special to them or that they really enjoyed watching. Yeah, it's, and it's great to, like, catch younger fans up or new fans up on everything that's mm -hmm. been going on in the past. It's just, it just goes along with this reality era thing. It's like, just... Yeah, the, the thing that I was excited about is there was a few years there where I kind of just stopped watching wrestling and... With the network, I can go back and watch the stuff that I missed. Yeah. So that was another big selling point for me, but made me really want to buy it. And there's Chris Benoit. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> that too. You're listening to Ringside Radio, invented by Chris Jericho. It's this site, and it's got a list of what could have been mm -hmm. in WWE. It's just things that... Almost that angles or storylines or things that could have happened, but for one reason or another didn't. The Undertaker was apparently supposed to debut as the gobbledygooker originally. He was supposed to, the I think Mark I've Calloway actually was supposed that. to be the original gobbledygooker, but it was mixed as it was too ridiculous. And the same day they they decided to go with the Undertaker that we still have. Wow. Today. God. <laughs> That's that imagine is if he crazy went, to think about. If he that, had like never And he was the guy the undertaker. Undertaker. Yeah. So they were like, oh, that's too ridiculous. We'll try this. And that obviously worked. Wow. Thank God. I just think that he, what could have been? Undertaker, Mark Halloway, could have been the gobbledygooker. In 1999, China was planned to win the WWE title. Oh my God. Well, imagine. Yes. <laughs> that could have happened. Well, I mean, David Arquette won the WCW yeah. World Heavyweight title, which I still try to forget it's about. Just, yeah, that, I think this would have been another one of those things. You remember, oh God, remember when China had the, wow. the, the world, the WWE Well, she was title? the Intercontinental Champion. Yeah. I think that was enough. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. too much. Okay, do you, you remember the Vince's illegitimate child whole, that whole story mm -hmm. thing? So apparently this, there's a lot, there's a big, basically this whole section here is about the sad story of Mr. Kennedy. If you oh, remember his, right. mm -hmm. his whole uh, time in WWE, so it was all a kind of a big unfortunate series of events because he won money in the bank and then had to lose it. So first of all, they were going to do the who killed Vince McMahon thing. That was going to, it was apparently going to be a story, the limo blowing up and everything. Yeah. But yeah. the week later, the whole Chris Benoit thing. So they pulled mm -hmm. the plug. Originally what it was supposed to be was that, Linda McMahon was going to be revealed as the murderer. And, and a long story short, it was going to turn into a year-long storyline that culminated at WrestleMania 24, where uh, Mr. Kennedy was revealed as Vince's illegitimate child while he was dead. So he was going to fight for control of the company oh my against gosh. Triple H. <laughs> and then Vince McMahon was going to come back at WrestleMania, Wow! say it was a whole big thing that was set up he was working with linda and basically it was all going to turn on triple h and then it was going to turn into a vince versus triple h thing for the company at the next wrestlemania oh my god so it was like a huge long-term booking thing that they had planned where mr kennedy was going to get this huge push to be vince's child which turned out to actually be hornswoggle is yeah. what they changed it to. <laughs> yeah i just think that's crazy 
That is completely insane. Because I always wondered what they were... I remember um, hearing or reading that it was supposed to be Mr. Kennedy Mm -hmm. originally, which, with that last name, that's Vince's middle name. Yeah. So there was, like, a Mm -hmm. connection there. Um, So I do remember reading that back when it was kind of going on, but, man, I didn't know there was that much to it. Yeah, because it makes you think, like... Where 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 were they gonna go with that yep. that story with the blowing up? Apparently that wow. that would have just been so weird, you mm-hmm. know. And another thing with Kennedy is, and all SmackDown and the World Title on in two thousand seven. You know how we uh, we always look back at how one of the worst things ever was the Great Khali winning the World Heavyweight Title. Yes. Well, apparently this is the reason he even won the title in the first place is because Kennedy won Money in the Bank, right? Mm-hmm. And then he got injured. And had to give up the briefcase to Edge, who cashed it on Undertaker, like, right after. Well, Edge got injured during that reign. Oh. Apparently, they just wanted a top heel to be the world champ so bad on SmackDown. The only one they had left was Kali. Wow. So they had to give it to him. It turned out that Kennedy's injury wasn't as bad as it was supposed to be, and he came back a month later. So he could have really held the briefcase Mm. and the world title. So basically, it was just a huge, terrible, terrible thing. Remember when Jeff Hardy... And Matt Hardy had their feud because of uh, Matt ca- doing causing accidents that oh hurt yeah Jeff Hardy like mm-hmm. the pyro thing the pyro the, and the didn't... car accident yeah all that stuff there was the other one that like the house never, burning yeah. down the like final match at WrestleMania the... at twenty five yeah. yeah well apparently okay. it was never supposed to be Matt Hardy I should just watch that it was supposed to be Christian was supposed oh. to be the original person wow. doing all that stuff but. Apparently, it leaked on the internet that it was going to be Christian, mm-hmm. so they changed it to Matt Hardy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's just huh. wow. weird to think that Christian was going to be the guy behind it. And they have history from, mm-hmm. you know, their tag oh, team yeah. and stuff anyway, so that's oh, just yeah. which I interesting. Just say, that was a great match at WrestleMania 25. If you haven't seen it, you should Which watch. one? Oh, the... the uh, Matt vs. Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, I just watched it a couple of weeks ago. I watched the whole pay-per-view, and it's really good. Uh, apparently, Eddie Guerrero, right... Before he died, he was booked to very soon after win the world title from Batista because I believe mm-hmm. he was feuding with Batista at the time. Well, they were doing this thing where they were like friends, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it was turning into uh, like rivals, a friendly of. rivalry, which be- was becoming a not so friendly mm-hmm. rivalry. Yeah. Well, yeah. Apparently, he was booked to win it like right after that. Wow. But then, and then we all know, obviously. With Eddie's passing, they kind of, you know, used Ray to... Yes. Well, apparently they asked Chavo first, but he turned it down because he didn't want to exploit. Mm-hmm. And so they turned to Ray next. I didn't know that Ch- I mean, I always... It had always crossed my mind, like... Wow. Why didn't they give it so to Chavo? So Chavo gave up, a world, like... A Royal Rumble win, a and WrestleMania a world, And event. a World Championship yep. win. Wow. And they gave it to Ray instead. Because I always wow. wondered, it's like, I'm surprised they you didn't know, give Chavo. Again, bold statement, but that really um, changes. Like, I, I just lost some respect for Rey Mysterio, and I gained a whole lot for Shalom. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this year, the Undertaker streak was obviously broken. But it's kind of interesting to see the people who apparently were considered to break the streak. The number one person that... Uh, apparently, Undertaker asked Randy Orton at 21 to break the streak. At WrestleMania 21, 2005. But he turned down out of respect to Taker. The next year, Undertaker asked Mark Henry oh to break gosh. the streak. Mark Henry did the same thing. And then Undertaker, at the, the same year that he faced Mark Henry, which you were at, apparently mm-hmm. he wanted to face Kurt Angle and lose. Wow. But Kurt Angle. Uh, well, he ended up in the, did the, the triple world threat title triple threat thing. But apparently that it turned into Mark Henry after Kurt Angle couldn't do it and stuff. So wow. you, it just shows Undertaker really wanted that to break for a long time. Yeah. He was asking all these people, and no one wanted to do it. <laughs> and <laughs> wow. SmackDown was pitched as an all diva show. What? <laughs> apparently. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> wow. Now, were, the divas of today, maybe. The divas right now. Yeah, yeah now. The actual women because, wrestlers who are coming up from the next Yeah, that, that would be very awesome, actually. But yeah, think of 1999. I, I couldn't oh think gosh. of... Well, that would just be a... Well, there's some, but I still think of mainly the Attitude Era, like, you know, just bimbos. It would just be <laughs> like... It would. So, I'm glad that didn't happen. Yeah. Had Edge not retired, the main event for 28... Was supposed to, if Edge could go another year, it was supposed to be Edge and Christian for mm. the world title. Mm. Edge's last match, 
putting Christian over for wow. the world title. Yeah, that's what should have happened. But that would have been amazing. Yeah, that's what yeah, should have would've. happened. So that tells you Edge knew. It was. Yeah. Co- he, he said if he could go one year, he wanted 28 to be. To put Christian over. Yeah. TLC, Unforgiven 2006, Cena Edge. I may have yes. told you guys this one, but I think yeah. this one is so interesting. And if you go back and watch, you will see it. Apparently, see, the, the stipulation was for the WWE title. If Cena lost, he had to go to SmackDown and was fired from Brawl. And uh, Cena ended up winning, but he pushed so hard to lose and put Edge over, but Vince wouldn't have it because Cena wanted to go to SmackDown and turn heel, <laughs> turn heel and feud with Batista and Rey Mysterio and stuff just to, to freshen up his character. And he wanted just Edge to be you know pushed even harder, wow. but Vince wouldn't do it. And you can see, if you watch The End of Unforgiven, he's, he's hesitant to even grab the title. And when he does, he's not happy. He's just, like, really... He's yeah, pissed. I remember you that. You can see yeah. it, and it's just... Well, we, want, we went back... Because you had mentioned this a while back. Yeah, and about a month ago. I had said something like, oh, we should watch the match, and we did. And when he grabbed it, he climbs up the ladder, and he sits there and looks at the title for, for a bit. And you could tell he's thinking, like, well, I could fall off and still have Edge win. It looked like he was debating, like... Should I grab this or should I do something to make it? Yeah, like, it's like it's almost like just, he was like, I seriously could maybe just yeah, just but like he throw the match. Had, like he because I mean, if you think about it, they weren't gonna fire Cena and Edge for yeah. It just shows he really cared that. about the sake yeah. of his his character wanting to change it up for the sake of the you know the fans well, and, and stuff. Yeah, and wanting to do for others exactly. Too. So it just shows it was like from then on it was like I think he knew he's like he's kind of locked in this. Thing that he's kind of still in now, you know. So it always makes mm-hmm. me wonder. It's like he probably wishes so bad he could do something mm-hmm. yeah. else, but he loves what he's doing regardless. Right. I think I think he's really pretty well split down the middle even today with because he doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to lose credibility with his, you know, younger fans mm-hmm. that you know think so highly of him. And but at the same time, he I think he wants something fresh. How can he not? Yeah, you know? seriously. Even people who have, you know, been huge supporters of him from the beginning are going, okay, something needs to happen. I know because I'm one of them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't dislike him. I'm never going to dislike him. But, man, I want something to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Muhammad Hassan, if he was not released for the controversial... London bombing thing, and his, you know, whole choking people with wire thing that happened the same day. He was set to win the world heavyweight title at SummerSlam oh next month. And that would have made him the youngest world champion ever. Vintage Ringside Radio! This has been Ringside Radio. Thank you for listening, and hope you enjoyed, and I'm Sloppy Joe. I'm Grim Chorizo. And I'm Bo Trina Cena. <laughs> And we will see you next time. Oh, yeah. Bo-leave. Don't stop. Bo-leaving.